her legs. She swallows the moon and nine months later gives birth to the sun. And then the birth of the sun comes into this square which is known as the earth. This is the symbol of the earth. They're all bells. Those forms coming down from the sun are all bells. And I took this configuration and put it into geometry and all those black lines. I know exactly where they are and what they mean. There's got to be something connected here with this whole thing spinning and what's happening in this temple. And uh, of course, the, the Egyptians were clairvoyant, and they lo we lost that. So now we have to bring our consciousness to clairvoyance, okay, and develop capacities again, maybe that is done through thinking. Okay, so here are the bells in, in, in a, another view and enlarged. Here they are again. They're the same configuration. And here are the platonic forms. They're beautiful. They're 6,000 years old. But I took sticks and mud. I took seven sticks and mud and I stuck them together in a piece of mud. And that's how I found this form. What I did is I put them together. See, I'm working from the periphery into the center. Uh, this is the first seven-sided shape that I got. It was with seven points. And the problem is, is that when I connected all the points, I got ten sides. I didn't get seven, which is what I was after. So I'm just showing you the process I go through is how many failures I had. And then, of course, I looked into the uh, geometry of the seven in history, and I found they took a cube and they cut one corner off, and that's seven. Um, here's other examples of, of how they get seven. There's five sides at the top and the bottom. And here's a cone with six shapes around it, and the bottom one is seven. This isn't what I'm after. Okay, so this shows you the bottom and the other side. So this is what the, the latest one is on seven. But I took seven floaters and I put them together in mud. Okay, and I tried to find out when I put them together, okay, what it would review. And here's the actual play model. There it is there. And this is the first seven-sided form that I got, but I did it artistically. This is done mathematically. And the mathematics always tells you in the books that there's gaps. There's a gap between these two circles. And they're right, there is. I found that out. But an artist doesn't care about gaps. An artist just keeps carving. That's what I did. I just kept going. And of course, what happened was, I got this, I enlarged it. So you can see here there's four on one side and three on the other. And then I made it artistic. This is a, a subjective production of art based on seven. Uh, and then I put it into objective. So I made all the triangles, there's 42 triangles in this form, uh, but there's a bend there, I don't like the bend, so I straightened it out and made the first seven-sided form. So basically that's quickly how I found the form. Uh, but you would never see all the struggles that I had. Mm -hmm. I had a Eurythmus come in my house one day and he saw my work and he said, what are you doing? I told him, he says, if I had got to that point, I'd have quit. I understand, you know, because it was just a mess. So here's what you have to do after you find it. You have to study again artistically, these artistic drawings, to study the form and try to figure out where it's coming from. And I found out, I put it into perfect uh, engineering drawing, which shows the object and, it's, and how perfect it is. I also put it into an icosahedron. Uh, this is the top view of it, and there's the icosahedron. So I uh, can show it from this view, and then I will show the whole thing completed. This is how the icosahedron and this seven-sided form relates. And what's amazing is that the inside of the tetrahedron, or the octahedron, I'm sorry, the icosahedron, has a triangle, and it's blue in here. I'll show you the blue one. It was here. Uh, I put it in the Egyptian. This is the 19 circles that you use in the Waldo School. On um, the Egyptian flower of life, it fits in the flower of life. Uh, and there's how it fits. I go back to these. And the seven-sided form. Okay, so here it is and where it comes from. It's a little fast, but it'll slow down. This is a tetrahedron put in inside a tetrahedron. And then the tetrahedron gets smaller halfway between here and here. That's a seven-sided form. It'll spin out. <coughs> and of 
course, I made a Saturn bell because I found out that the seals, okay, the seals are to me are bells because they're in the toe and ether, and also the signer, in some indication, said that the seals were based on not what he saw but what he heard. So I made uh, the the seven uh, sided form into the seal of Saturn, and I also put it into uh, uh, another one into uh, the Venus. Okay, this is where it comes from also. You saw it come from a tetrahedron. Now, I'll show you where it comes from. That's the geometry of it. Now you can watch where I go. This is, um, this is uh, showing how it folds in from this geometry. And uh, this, this, the, this man here who's, who's holding, holding the uh, uh, sculpture is uh, George Lachler at the Gertheon. Okay, so uh, I wanted to know what's inside this form. So all I did is what I took one form, I took the points where they were, connected them, and I got a whole new form, which is ten sided. And then I found out what's inside that, and what's inside that is a cube. There is a cube exactly in the middle of this form, a, an objective cube, not a guessing or subjective thing. It's an objective uh, development of a cube in the middle of this form. Do you think there'd be a cube in there that has six sides and perfect? That's amazing. I did. I read my back end of the edges. Here's the other studies that I've done to show you how I study these forms. It's a lot of work to do this, but I love it. Now I found out that it fits in a cube. That this can go in the cube is just unbelievable. Uh, and so I, I also want to show you what the bubble looks like because I made a bubble. This is what 